Good morning, good people. Peace be with you. Today is 11th June, the 12th day of the Trezenna and the 8th day of the Novena of St. Anthony. Once again, I am Father Nelson Lobo and you are watching the YouTube channel Wandering Guru in case you are hearing me for the first time. Today the church also remembers St. Barnabas who had played a very important role in the first extension of Christianity outside the Jewish world. We shall reflect on his life a little bit in our reflection after the Gospel. My dear friends, down the centuries the church has had a lot of experience in missionary work just like St. Paul and Barnabas and St. Anthony. After the Gospel reading, I will present to you 10 very important Christ principles for sharing the good news which is given, taken from today's Gospel. These principles are taken from the studies of the missionaries. These principles will be very useful to those who are in leadership roles in the church, especially the catechists, the coordinators, the parish council members, you know, all those who are involved in this work. The reflection, though a bit long, but very important for our Christian life. So stay with me. Let's enjoy this today's Novena uh, prayer with with St. Anthony. Let's now begin the morning prayer. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Invitatory Psalm, Psalm 95, a call to praise God. Antiphon, come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for he has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the church. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for he has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the church. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for he has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the church. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea. It belongs to Him, the dry land too, for it was formed by His hands. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for He has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the Church. Come, then, let us bow down and worship bending the knee before the Lord. Our Maker, for He is our God and we are His people, the flock He shepherds. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for He has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the Church. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for He has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the Church. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I saw in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for he has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the Church. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us adore the Holy Spirit, for he has spoken to us through the prophets and teachers of the Church. Greatly we honor the exalted triumph of Christ's Apostle, crowned with all his merits, faithful to Jesus, Barnabas once suffered violence and torment. Gracious and noble, he renounced his farmlands, that a new people might abound and prosper, first known as Christians, strong in faith and kindness, loving and joyful. Gladly observing Paul in all his greatness, he found and brought him to combine their labors. Moved by the Spirit, they traversed wide region, faithful companions. 
He spared no labor, seeking Christ with favor, baptizing many, fostering them with goodness, till he proved worthy of the palm of victory, shedding his life blood. Through the petitions of so great a servant, give us the strength, Lord, to pursue salvation, that we may ever sing your praise together, dwelling in heaven. Amen. Psalm 43 Longing for the Temple Antiphon 1 Lord, send forth your light and your truth. Defend me, O God, and plead my cause against a godless nation. From deceitful and cunning men, rescue me, O God. Since you, O God, are my stronghold, why have you rejected me? Why do I go mourning? oppressed by the foe. O oh, send forth your light and your truth. Let these be my guide. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy, my Redeemer. I will thank you on the harp, O oh God, my God. Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God, I will praise Him still, my Saviour and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be, forever. Amen. Lord, send forth your light and your truth. Canticle taken from the book of Isaiah. Anguish of a dying man, and joy in his restoration. And even do, Lord, keep us safe all the days of our life. Once I said in the noontime of life, I must depart. To the gates of the nether world, I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. My dwelling like a shepherd's tent is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who sievers the last thread. Day and night you give me over to torment. I cry out until the dawn. Like a lion he breaks all my bones. Day and night you give me over to torment. Like a swallow, I utter shrill cries. I moan like a dove. My eyes grow weak, gazing heavenward. O Lord, I am in straits. Be my surety. You have persevered my life from the pit of destruction when you cast behind your back all my sins. For it is not the nether world that gives you thanks, nor death that praises you, neither do those who go down into the pit await your kindness. The living, the living give you thanks, as I do today. Fathers declare to their sons, O God, your faithfulness. The Lord is our Saviour. We shall sing to stringed instruments in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Lord, Keep us safe all the days of our life. Psalm 65, Solemn Thanksgiving, Antiphon 3 To you, O God, our praise is due in Zion. To you our praise is due in Zion, O God. To you we pay our vows, you who hear our prayer. To you all flesh will come with its burden of sin, too heavy for us, our offenses, but you wipe them away. Blessed is he whom you chose and called to dwell in your courts. We are filled with the blessings of your house, of your holy temple. You keep your pledge with wonders, O God our Saviour, the hope of all the earth and of far distant isles. You uphold the mountains with your strength. You are girded with power. You still the roaring of the seas the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. 
the ends of the earth stand in awe at the sight of your wonders the lands of sunrise and sunset you fill with your joy you care for the earth give it water you fill it with riches your river in heaven brims over to provide its green and thus you provide for the earth you drench it furrows you level it soften it with showers you bless its growth you crown the year with your goodness abundance flows in your steps in the pastures of the wilderness it flows the hills are girded with joy the meadows covered with flocks the valleys are decked with wheat they shout for joy yes they sing glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen to, to you o oh god our praise is due in zion brothers i want to remind you of the gospel i preached to you which you received and in which you stand firm you are being saved by it at this very moment i handed on to you first of all what i myself received that christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures that he was buried and in accordance with the scriptures rose on the third day the word of the lord thanks be to god they proclaimed the lord's praises and his saving power they proclaimed the lord's praises and his saving power they spoke of the wonders he had worked and his saving power glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit they proclaimed the lord's praises and his saving power gospel canticle antiphon barnabas set out for tarsus to look for paul once he found him he brought him to antioch where they met with the church and instructed a great number of people blessed be the lord the god of israel he has come to his people and set them free he has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant david through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant this was the oath he swore to our father abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life you my child shall be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our god the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen Barnabas set out for Tarsus to look for Paul. Once he found him, he brought him to Antioch, where they met him with the church and instructed a great number of people. Intercessions. Let us sing a fitting song of praise to our Savior, who destroyed the power of death and made clear the path to life and immortality through the gospel. And let us petition him in humble supplication. Strengthen your church in faith and love. You gave wonderful guidance to your church through her holy and distinguished teachers. May Christians rejoice always in the splendid legacy these teachers have given to your church. Strengthen your church in faith and love. When their holy pastors prayed to you as Moses had done, you forgave the sins of the people. through the intercession of these holy pastors continue to sanctify and purify your church strengthen your church in faith and love you anointed your holy ones in the midst of their brothers 
and called the Holy Spirit down upon them. Fill all the leaders of your people with the Holy Spirit. Strengthen your church in faith and love. You, Lord, are the sole possession of your holy pastors. Grant that those you have redeemed with your blood may remain always in you. Strengthen your church in faith and love. Gathering our prayer and praises into one, let us offer the prayer Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. God our Father, you filled Saint Barnabas with faith and Holy Spirit and sent him to convert the nations. Help us to proclaim the gospel by word and deed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles Chapter 11, 21 to 26 Chapter 13, 1 to 3 In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who was a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. Then completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response for Hill Psalm. Your response. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. Your response? The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for Him, His holy arm. Your response? The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. The Lord has made His salvation known in the sight of the nations. He has revealed His justice. He has remembered His kindness and His faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Your response? The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord all your lands. Break into song, sing praise. Your response? The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpet and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Your response? The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 10, verses 7 to 13. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. No sack for the journey or a second tunic or sandals or walking stick. The laborers deserve his skip. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you live. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, who was Barnabas, the saint of the day? Let's reflect in short on the character of Barnabas. He was a Jew, a Levite born, born in Cyprus. His baptismal name was Joseph. He was a popular early church leader, fondly nicknamed as Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, son of consolation in Greek. For he was known to assist and encourage others. We see this in the chapters taken from Acts chapter 4, chapter 9, chapter 11 and chapter 15. After Saul's conversion, the, the Jews conspired to kill Paul. The disciples in Jerusalem fearfully avoid Paul, doubting his conversion story. But Barnabas took him, introduced him to the apostles and defended him. By this act, Barnabas exhibits personal courage. Not only his reputation, but also his life was at risk. Once Paul was accepted by the community, both of them worked together on missionary journeys. That's the story in short of St. Barnabas, the saint of the day. My dear brothers and sisters, I said I will give you 10 principles of missionary journeys of all those who are involved in spreading the good news. Here they are. You know, my friends, any fire that does not spread will eventually die out. A church without missionary activity is a contradiction in terms, just as a fire that does not burn is a contradiction. So, 10 principles. First one, go to the lost sheep. The function of a shepherd or any missionary is to seek and to save those who are lost. Jesus assumes that as Christians, we will be going to seek to bring the lost back to reconciliation with the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. Disciples who are not doing evangelism or sharing the good news are not living in harmony with their identity as Christ followers. Jesus said, for even the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost, Luke 19.10. Missionary work is not an option for a disciple of Christ, let us be decisive determined and directed about sharing the good news of Jesus. The second principle, preach the kingdom of God. The kingdom literally means king's dominion or control. Kingdom of God begins with a personal relationship with Christ, who is the door to heaven. Before people will agree to submit to Christ's control, they need to be introduced to the loving king and shepherd. Jesus said, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. John 10, 9. So by helping people learn how to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, they will see that all of their other needs are then taken care of through Lord's blessings. Third principle, freely you have received, freely give. Missionary work or sharing the good news is an expression of our overflowing gratitude for what the Lord has done for us through Jesus Christ. Outreach missions with an attitude of grace. We are not to feel that we are doing something above and beyond the call of duty. We are not doing a favor to God. In fact, we are called to do our duty sharing the good news. The fourth principle, meet the needs of the people. Jesus said, heal the sick, raise the dead and cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, etc, etc. 
Christ teaches us that we are to meet physical, emotional, mental, social, cultural and spiritual needs of people we are ministering to. You have heard the saying, people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Missionaries in Africa are now reaping a great harvest of new souls because the pioneers set up hospitals and schools and other social services to meet the needs of the people. The fifth principle, trust God for support. Jesus said, do not take along any gold or silver copper in your bands, for the worker is worth his keep. Matthew 10, 9. Know that the Lord will supply you with all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 Some people hesitate to do evangelism because they do not think they have enough knowledge, resources, financial or emotional strength. Let them realize that as we move ahead in God's will, we will not lack any good thing. Have you heard about Hudson Taylor, the famous pioneer missionary to China? He said, God's will done in God's way will not lack God's support. Meaning the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. The sixth principle, work with those who respond to you. Jesus said, whatever town or village you enter, if the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. Some places, my friend, will be suitable for some evangelists, for some missionaries, for some preachers, but not others. Realize that many times people reject the message because of the messenger. Birds of a feather tend to flock together. I, being a priest and preacher, have experienced this so many times. In some places, I've been very good, very acceptable, very successful. Some places, people were indifferent, even, even negative. So it's part of a job, it's part of a journey. The seventh principle, forget those who ignore you or those who are indifferent. Jesus said, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your word, shake the dust of your feet when you leave, the, leave that home or town, Matthew 10, 14, 15. Do not take a rejection personally. Do not internalize criticism. When you are a man of God and when you stand for God and when you stand for truth, you will be criticized. Jesus said, he who listens to you, listens to me. He who rejects you, rejects me. But he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Luke 10, verses 15 and 16. Eighth principle, expect opposition and criticism. Jesus said, be on your guard against man. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in the synagogues. This indicates that there will be opposition both from the world as well as in the halls of religion. We should prepare our minds and hearts to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Take up the full armor of God so you can stand in the evil day, says St. Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Do not be overcome evil, but overcome evil with good, Romans chapter 12, verse 21. So my dear friends, expect opposition from the unexpected. Jesus said, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Matthew chapter 10 verses 34, 36. Some of the people who we might think are to be our friends and allies may actually end up opposing us. It's part of our journey. Do not be discouraged. The ninth principle, do not be afraid. Fear is probably the main reason why people do not want to venture out into missions in sharing the gospel. They are afraid of what other people might think, do or say. The fear of God is a great antidote to the fear of man. King David wrote in Psalm 34 verse 9, The young lions may lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord will not lack one good thing. And the final tenth principle, results are not our ultimate responsibility. Know that it is the responsibility of each person to trust Christ as his or her saviour. People are not rejecting you, but they are rejecting Christ and his message, which is their responsibility. Paul wrote, for everyone will give an account of himself to God, Romans 14, 12. Do not take your own revenge. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, in Romans chapter 12, verses 19 and 20. Our job is to deliver the message of the gospel, not to worry about the results. A good steward just takes the meal from the kitchen and serves it on the table without messing up the ingredients along the way. We are to be good stewards of the gospel. 
Many times, many people say, what is the use of preaching a sermon? People don't change. We don't preach a sermon expecting a result. Result is brought about by God, not by the preacher. Preacher's duty is only to preach. If people don't change and if they don't want to listen, if they don't want to have a change of heart, they have to be accountable one day. So my dear friends, with this little long reflection, we have a few questions for reflection. First, Barnabas means sons of encouragement. Do you, my friend, encourage others or out of jealousy, criticize or put hurdles in the growth prospects of others, especially your family members and colleagues and at workplaces? Second, are you doing the work of an ev evangelist? When God opens the doors for you, do you enter them or walk the other way? What is your response to what Paul wrote? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? How do you plan to share the good news of Jesus with others? Just like St. Anthony or St. Paul or St. Barnabas did. Keeping these questions in our mind, we now pray the Novena Prayer of St. Anthony. Novena Prayer to St. Anthony. Hail St. Anthony, flower of purity and the joy of Christianity. I believe in you, O angel of wisdom and divine love. And I rejoice because God has filled you with so many gifts, gifts of humility, mercy, and the gift of performing miracles. With great hope and humility, I ask you to intercede on my behalf, a poor sinner. I ask you in all urgency, you may mention your request here. I pray for the love of child Jesus, who played in your arms so many times, for refuge of those in trouble. You know very well how much I need this gift, which I ask in your holy name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, be with us and bless us. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, bless our families and protect them from all sicknesses and dangers. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, bless and heal all the sick people, especially those who are in hospitals and bedridden. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, help all those who are addicted to alcohol, drugs or pornography, to overcome their sinful habits and to embrace new life. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, help our people to be honest, faithful and sensitive to the needs of others. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, bless our youth, bless them with good jobs, bless their future. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, bless our children, that they may grow in faith, hope and love. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, protect all our political leaders from selfish ambitions and greed. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, we seek peace and goodness in the world. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, empower all our priests to be authentic, to be powerful preachers and witnesses of the Gospel. Jesus, through the intercession of St. Anthony, Bless all the people who attend the Trisena and participate in the Holy Eucharist. May the divine assistance remain with us always. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Have a beautiful day. Do share this YouTube link and invite your friends to participate in this spiritual journey with St. Anthony. Thank you. God bless you.
Teachers.